What's up guys, Ben from Retroformance here, and look at what we have in our shop. A beautiful 1959 AMC Rambler station wagon. Now, probably one of the coolest cars, if not obviously the coolest wagon that I've ever seen. I've never even seen one, never seen a picture of one, didn't even know they existed. Um, seen a few Ramblers, but nothing in the wagon. So this is a really cool car, it's really clean. Um, somebody started to do a 350 swap maybe back in the day. Um, they had the mounts all done. They had a nine inch Ford in the rear, a uh, four link. Uh, they had a couple of custom cross members in here, um, but we're not gonna be able to use any of that because a little asterisk, a little side note here is the customer wanted a 12 valve Cummins in it. So we got to put basically an 1100 pound motor in the front of this unibody car. So definitely some challenges that we're gonna have to think about, you know, boxing kind of a frame. Um, tying in different things, new cross members, um, how do we basically beef up the unibody. Um, it's going to need new front suspension. Uh, we're going to do obviously different training. We're going to have to modify the tunnel. Um, there's a lot of things going on to try to get this to work and we got to try to get it as low as possible. And now the 12 valve is a pretty tall motor. Um, we got to be careful of the hood because really the goal here is to make sure it's absolutely stealthy and uh, nobody knows there's a 12 valve in it until they hear it. So um, really cool project. We're excited. It's going to be a lot of work. Um, we're going to take you through it step by step, episode by episode. So uh, today what we did is uh, we started pulling some things out. Um, we're going to start mocking up, try to realize our space requirements for this. Um, Suspension is going to be key. So we got to kind of figure out where it's got to ride so we know where to build the cross members and the, uh, the uh, suspension towers and and some of the modifications we have to make there. So it's uh, basically, we're bringing it in the shop. We are gonna start stripping down some stuff and uh, starting to mock up some cool stuff. So wheels, uh, we cutting the springs out, cutting the struts out, and just we'll block it up kind of where we think it's gotta be. And then we gotta start taking measurements from there. So uh, let's hop over to the engine bay and I'll show you why we gotta uh, cram this thing in here. All right, so the engine bay in this was never meant for 12 valve. So, Interestingly, we got to cut some stuff out and we got to run a few components way closer to the front of the car than we would, would normally have to with a different kind of motor because, you know, originally if this thing had a V8 in it, you know, you're going to have only really four cylinders deep, but with a 12 valve, you're straight six. It's a big straight six. Um, it's a lot longer. Plus, we also have to run an intercooler because we don't trust uh, doing burnouts in this thing with no, uh, no chill there. So what we gotta do is we have to try to get an intercooler as close as possible to the front of the grill here, then get a radiator in without hitting the balancer on the 12 valve. Then we are gonna try to run electric fans on the side so that we can bring that radiator as close to the front of the motor as possible. Then we have to come out on the back side and make sure that there's all kinds of clearance back here where the original heater core was. So unfortunately, we were hoping to not cut out the firewall, but it looks like we're gonna have to at first initial mock-ups, but we're really lucky that this car has a peaked front grill and that the hood comes down pretty far over the front nose here. And uh, what that does is that allows us to move the intercooler forward as far as possible to give us the most amount of room in the back so that um, cutting the firewall and the tunnel out is as minimal as possible. So we'll see till we mock it up. Well, we can't get the springs out with the uh, spring compressors because they're too tall and uh, there's not enough room to get them out. So we're gonna resort to cutting them off on the car. Stay tuned. Good thing your sunglasses are so stylish. Okay. Yeah, you wouldn't want to be caught on camera just looking like a jabroni. What? A jabroni. Won't need those. So one thing that's uh, very important before we start uh, trying to figure out 
what kind of suspension setup we're going to be running and where everything's going to mount is to have your right tire and wheel setup. What this means is you can start planning out kind of where the tire and wheel combo has got to ride and where your offset is so that you don't build suspension geometry and then have to find wheels and tires to fit later. So um, my dad just is looking like he's coming back from the junkyard because uh, one thing that we're really trying to do is uh, build this from the stuff we have here or right out of the junkyard. We're recycling basically everything. So um, I think he's just getting back now with a bunch of wheels and tires we can try out and look to uh, the plan around and uh, let's check it out. All right, what do we got? Oh, nice. <laughs> Woo. Tires. Oh, they look brand new. I guess that's what happens when you crash a car. Oh, yeah. man. Sweet. Can get them out. Huh? Oh, they taper him. Yeah, you gotta be careful because they're. Dude, I don't think I've ever had lug nuts to see the 911 stuff. Because everything I have is lug bolts and then uh, send them in. But this is nice because then you can run any, you don't have to locate on the hub. Just you know? in case you need some. Dash. <laughs> lug bolts. Is that a hot item? Dude, what a hot item, man. <laughs> nice like we too. needed. Nice and freshies. <laughs> Dude, they're probably honestly the same, too. <laughs> like, dude, how... The, 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 oh, save the lug nuts to dash or never have another dasher again. You gotta save the lug nuts. Don't be the lug nuts will still haunt us. Yeah, right, we're just pulling wheels on. Fun fact to all you people out there, uh, AMC hubs on the left side of the car our left hand thread had a few uh, cussing moments earlier trying to get these 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 off but you're going the wrong way all right we're gonna pull the jack stands out let her down see what these uh, I believe they're charger wheels um, for some reason they got small Ford bolt pattern but uh they're looking good right now but let's see what they look like letting down all right let it ride I don't know, but all I know is that is a beautiful sight. The whole car, okay, well, first of all, drag race is back here. <laughs> oh my goodness, that is a good look, huh? To all you low lifers at home. Woo! All right, so we just put on the Dodge Charger wheels um, with the springs out, lowered the car down. So now we have actually maxed out the lower control arm and it's sitting relatively close to where we want it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull the springs again out of the back and get that one down where we want it. And then once it's sitting here, kind of where we think ride height's gonna be, that's when we can start taking some measurements. And just by looking at the front on the ground, it took the car from, uh, a grandpa's station wagon from the 50s, you know, out back to a mean looking hot rod. So we're pretty excited to see it. And uh, so let's get the back done. Optimum weight, power, power to weight ratio, right. three lug nuts only. Offset the bent wheels by. Yeah, exactly. It's more of a wheel weight than a suggested safety. Four lug nuts, we're gonna go three. It's mock up only. Bounce it, bounce it. No shock, oh man, Ghostbusters. We have the loose scanner rod, like that little side to side action. Woo. Somebody forgot to finish the job. Yeah, but with this kind of suspension, they'd be finishing some other jobs. All right, so we need a long board that goes across yeah. both frame rails kind of thing. Yeah, right, yeah, right, right. across. The old walk out back and find stuff in the dark. Carry it back. 
Which one do you think is that one? Alright. Look at you. Giant springs. Huge. This thing must be a little heavier than we think in the rear. These are massive. Checking to make sure that nothing's gonna go down and smash through the floor when we go to let this thing down with no springs in it. Whoa, whoa. Woo! Let's say whatever that is, that's it. Oh my goodness. This thing's looking like a hot rod. As if it was this easy, huh? It is on TV. It is. <laughs> well, everyone else is gonna think it's this easy. So we show them how much you gotta build just to get it like this to drive. It's hot rod bait. Oh man, that's the, that's the big issue right here. This region. All right guys, what a great night. Um, we got the springs taken out. We got the uh, Dodge Charger wheels on it, mocked up, and then we lowered it down to kind of check where we're gonna uh, have the offsets, the tires, the suspension travel, all that stuff kind of sitting where we want it. We actually moved the bumper down to kind of a test location where we think it's gonna be. Um, so all around good night gives us a bunch of motivation for how we want the car to look. So now all we have to do is uh, basically build the entire chassis and get a motor in it and go through a transmission and tie it all in with structure and you know everything else. But uh, at least we have some motivation to uh, you know get it outside in a couple of days, take some pictures uh, just to make sure we keep everything where we want it. And uh, yeah, then we'll get, keep getting back into it. Follow the channel Retroformance. Follow along with this build, the Rambler, and uh, stay in touch with us. Likes, comments, everything right at the end. See you guys.